So now that we have some idea about the what's and why's of Direct Connect, let's come back to the how part and let's understand how does the Direct Connect work. So as you already now are aware that AWS Direct Connect links your internal network to an AWS Direct Connect location over a standard Ethernet optical fiber cable in which one end of the cable is connected to your router and the other one is connected to an AWS Direct Connect router, isn't it? There is a statement that is really interesting and important and has been mentioned in the documentation as well is that an AWS Direct Connect location provides access to AWS in the region with which it is associated. Okay, so I'll repeat that once again so you can just let it sink in. So an AWS Direct Connect location provides access to AWS in the region with which it is associated. And you might ask me how. So direct connection as you may not be aware of, but it is a global service. So let's clear that out first. But you need to make a choice on the location that you want to use as a part of your direct connect location. And that is the way it actually provisions resources closer to the customer that it has. That is why even though the service itself is global, the locations are specific to the region. There may be more than one direct connect locations in a region. There is no harm in checking that out, isn't it? So now that we have our AWS cloud, let's bring up our AWS direct connect location. So this is how the direct connection looks like. So you have the direct connection endpoint or the direct connect endpoint in the AWS cage. So cage is like your rack or site. I hope you're getting the point, isn't it? And which is connected to the customer or partner router in the respective cage and which creates a connection to the premises network or the customer network that you have. So here we need to discuss about two main components. One is the connection and the other one is the virtual interface themselves. So when we talk about the connection part, we know that we create a connection from the on-premise network to the AWS region or the direct connection location. And here as well, we have two segments. One is the dedicated connection and the other one we have is the hosted connection. We will talk about them in detail next. So don't worry about that as of now. So moving on, we have the virtual interfaces that you see here as well. So we have the VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 where VLAN 1 that's the blue one which denotes the private virtual interfaces and we have the VLAN 2 which is green and denotes the public virtual interface which helps us to connect to the public resources such as S3 and S3 Glacier. And on the customer side we have the customer router or firewall which completes the connection as a whole and the people sitting on the customer end are able to access the resources stored in the cloud that is AWS. I hope you got some idea and how the direct connect works actually. So this may not be required so much in depth for the exam, but I wanted to share it nonetheless. It may help you in future when you will be working in AWS or with direct connect. So and then the customer side, we have the customer router or firewall, which completes the connection as a whole and people sitting in the customer location or the on-premise location are able to access the resources. So you have the customer router, which connects to the AWS direct connect location. And the direct connect location actually gets connected to the AWS region that you have. So this is a completely secure line or a channel. And this is completely dedicated and you are the only one who is going to use it. So that is much more secure for yourself. But yeah, it may cost you uh, for the connection and everything for the usage, but it is way more secure than using the public internet space, which we were doing using the site to site VPN. Okay, so I just told you a few moments ago that I'll tell you about Direct Connect connection. So here it is. So let's talk about that. So we discussed in length about how AWS Direct Connect helps us to create a dedicated connection between the on-premise and the AWS Direct Connect locations. So what are these connections actually called? So we have two types of connections here. So one is the dedicated and the other one is the hosted one. And let's understand the differences here. So when you compare both of them, the biggest difference that you would see between them is that with dedicated connections, you as a customer can request for a dedicated connection using the console or API and AWS creates the physical Ethernet connection with that single customer, that is you. But in the hosted one, what happens is that you directly contact a partner in the AWS Direct Connect partner program who will create the physical Ethernet connection on your behalf. 
So the partner associated with the Direct Connect Partner Program will have the provisions to do that. So other than the location, we have another aspect which is really important, that is the port speed. So if I say this point, you will ask me, okay, what is port speed? So you are going to be really surprised by answer because you already know the answer. So port speed is the maximum speed at which the data is transferred, like your bandwidth speed, which obviously depends on the port speed value that you have. That's as simple as it can get. So the dedicated connection, the possible port speed values are 1 Gbps and 10 Gbps, and you cannot change the port speed after you create the connection request. And for the hosted connection, you have values ranging from 50 Mbps, 100 Mbps, 200 Mbps, 300, 400, 500, 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, 5 Gbps, and 10 Gbps. And here, the AWS Direct Connect partners who have met a specific requirement may create a 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, 5 Gbps, up to 10 Gbps hosted connection. Here as well, you cannot change the port speed after you create the connection request. So this actually gives you an idea of how the speeds are going to vary and what are the customizations that you can do or what exactly is your requirement and what amount of speed that you need. And based on that, you will be charged. So make sure you make the proper decision as per your requirement. So you can go with the dedicated connection or you can go with the hosted connection as per your requirements. So till now we spoke about how we can create a single direct connect connection for our usage. But what if we want more resilience and for that we need redundancy. So how are we going to achieve that in AWS Direct Connect? So with AWS Direct Connect, you can make use of lag. That is not like your lag in the sense you're lagging behind or something like that. Don't consider it to be that. So the full form of lag is link aggregation group. So if we want to make use of multiple connections and make them redundant, but it should basically act logically as a single connection. So for that, we make use of a LA CP protocol. So that is link aggregation control protocol, which helps us to aggregate multiple dedicated connections at a single direct connect endpoint. Okay, so I'll repeat this once again. So using a LACP protocol, that is the link aggregation control protocol, we can actually aggregate multiple dedicated connections at a single direct connect endpoint. Remember, even though they are two different connection, we combine them into a single managed connection and thus increasing the throughput beyond what a single connection can provide. So LACP protocol existed before all this as well. And we are just making use of that to aggregate connections so that we can benefit from it. It's not something that AWS has created on its own, just like other things as well, isn't it? That's cool. So you can see we have the single connection or a single direct connect endpoint here from the AWS side. And we have four dedicated connections. That is connection one, two, three, and four. And what, if, and what we have done is we have taken two connections and created a lag. Or see, when I tell this term lag, don't go ahead and think about lagging. Just imagine the full form now. Okay, so lag is basically your link aggregation group. So think of uh, aggregation. When I say we create a lag, think of an aggregation group. So which actually terminates at a single location. That is our direct connect location. So we have connections 1, 2 forming lag 1 and connection 3 and 4 forming the lag 2 but they are visualized as they are single connections, even though they are formed with two dedicated connections. So with this, you can just use and maintain two lags or two lag connections instead of using four dedicated connections. So that's quite impressive, isn't it? So now you have to just manage two lags, not four dedicated connections. But logically, they are actually like four connections, but you have aggregated them into two each so that it is easy to use and it is highly effective with redundancy. So with this, actually, you can use and maintain two lag connections instead of four dedicated connections. And that's really important for us. But before using this, you should understand a few more caveats to this or else you might face issues and uh, or you might have to make some changes in your design. So first one is all connections must be dedicated connections and have a port speed of 1 Gbps or 10 Gbps. By now, you should be aware of what this port speed is. So I feel we are all good here because it can create a bottleneck. So it's advised to have same port speed for all the connections. All connections in the lag must use the same bandwidth. So that's quite uh, evident, isn't it? The third point is that you can have a maximum of four connections in a lag. Each connection in the lag counts towards your 
overall connection limit for the region so that completes your quota of four connections in a lag so that is why it is said that you must have a maximum of four connections in a lag and the fourth point is, is also very self-explanatory all connections in the lag must terminate at the same aws direct connect endpoint terminate here doesn't mean like terminator we are not at war here okay we are not destroying anything all connections in the lag must terminate at the same aws direct connect endpoint means that there is a connection point okay imagine there is a connection point where you connect your physical line and all the connections should be plugged into that point or the endpoint so from there other connections can be created or devices can be plugged in and that's what connection termination means so in the same way that i want to tell you that all connections in the lag must terminate at the same aws direct connect endpoint so coming back to yet another very important feature we saw lags in the direct connect which actually helps us with redundancy but what if we want to connect multiple vpcs to a single direct connect endpoint and make use of it yes you can do that and for that you need to make use of the aws direct connect gateways so before that i want to tell you something about direct connect that remember that a direct connect gateway is a globally available service you can create the direct connect gateway anywhere in any region that you have and access it from all other regions remember this point very carefully okay so a direct connect gateway is a globally available service or resource and you can create the direct connect gateway in any region and access it from all other regions so having said that let's see the example here so we have vpc in us west 2 so that's on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have another vpc at us east 1 and to have it connected to the direct connection endpoint or the direct connect endpoint we need to create virtual private gateways across both the vpcs so that we can have a connection point channel which is secure that is also called as your virtual private gateway associations as you can see in the image as well the highlighted ones so now that we have created the virtual private gateways or the associations the next thing is to connect the gateway to the direct connect location isn't it so for that we have created the private virtual interface to connect our direct connect location and the direct connect gateway and that location will obviously have a connection to the customer gateway just like we had in the previous one so in normal situation also you will have a direct connect location actually connected to the customer gateway or the customer network which actually creates the direct connect connection isn't it but here what happens is we are not connecting the direct connect endpoints directly to the vpcs we are just using the direct connect gateways to connect more than one vpc to it so as you can see we have two vpcs us west 2 and us east 1 and both of them have the virtual private gateways and the associations to the direct connect gateways and that actually is connected using the private virtual interface to the direct connect location and the direct connect location is connected to the customer gateway so we have a channel here till the direct connect gateway it's a single pass and from there you can connect multiple interfaces or multiple vpcs so that's the whole idea in this process you have to consider a few things so you need to choose the vpc that you're going to associate it with and you need to ensure that you have your virtual private gateways created to create the associations and once you have all this go ahead and create your direct connect gateway and there is one more thing that you need to remember here very carefully there is no property of being transitive and remember that even if you have an association with your direct connect gateway it doesn't allow you to connect to other vpgs or the virtual private gateways to communicate with each other okay so it's just like not being transitive so make sure you keep this in mind it is not meant to connect to virtual private gateways but instead it is used to connect your on-premise to the aws cloud so you might ask me should i create direct connect gateways in a specific location so don't worry about that as i already told you it is a globally available resource you can create it in any region you want and access it from any other region that is why you are able to connect the vpc1 and the vpc2 with the same direct connect gateway location or the connection i hope that was clear let's move on